Hello and welcome to the Sketching Greyhound. We are looking at the third episode of Big Bang Theory today. And after I almost had a meltdown last time, this one will be a little bit more quiet, I promise. That is Jesse looking lovingly at his pack, by the way. If you want to make sure that he also meets you with that, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. And now let's start. Once again, I had almost recorded the complete episode when I decided to go a little of a different approach because honestly, this is not the most memorable episode. So I don't want to go just through it because I think that's, that's almost a bit boring. I think we will go very quickly over the episode and then focus on two topics I would like to go in a little bit deeper. Well, the, the overall plot of this episode is uh, relatively boilerplate, I would say. You have Leonard who sees that Penny is dating Maine. Penny, the mailman did it again. He oh, sorry. Which should not be surprising, but it seems to pretty much devastate him at this point. And while he falls into a hole, wants to buy cats and stuff, and <laughs> Sheldon wants to stop him, he tries to counsel him and gives him actually a pretty good advice. I do feel obligated to point out to you that she did not reject you. You did not ask her out. So Leonard goes over there to Penny and asks her out. And she, of course, misunderstands him and thinks he just wants to hang out with her and the other guys. Great. Yeah, I like hanging out with you guys. Us guys? He doesn't clear that up. They go on a date. It is pretty awkward, quite silent. <laughs> What's new at the Cheesecake Factory? Not a lot of talk there. In the end, Leonard hurts himself, they go home, and the date is over. Of course, Penny did understand what it was supposed to be. Leonard. Yeah. Was this supposed to be a date? But Leonard does a quick cop out. I think I might have a little concussion. I'm gonna go lay down for a while. Good night. And that's the episode. Not that extremely groundbreaking, I would say. Somebody I don't want to just overlook in this short summary because it's the person I drew, <laughs> Leslie Winkle. I like Sarah Gilbert, the actress, very much. I liked her already in Roseanne, where she actually also played with the Leonard actor. They played a pair there. And I really liked her character there. I, she was a very strong-willed youth, which I admired at that point quite a lot. I can make you feel like a man, David. <laughs> Take out the trash. And so this is her first appearance here. She actually has a recurring role. Also her character and her relationship to the other ones evolves and is retroactively changed a little bit. We're used to that by now already in episode three, but I really like her. So I drew her, although her role in this episode is not that big yet, but it's already pretty funny. She and Leonard are considering to go out on a date. Wait, are you asking me out? <laughs> I was going to characterize it as the modification of our colleague slash friendship paradigm with the addition of a date-like component, but we don't need to quibble over terminology. They decide that it all anyway is shown in the chemical reaction and the goodnight kiss. So they just jump to that. Can you define the parameters of the kiss? Closed mouth, but romantic. Mint? Thank you. Shall I count down from three? No, I think it needs to be spontaneous. And are a bit disappointed. None? None. Ah. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. Thank you. And that's already Leslie for this episode. But she'll come later, and I like her here and later very much. So that's why we're drawing her. But I promise you two other things I want you to talk about. Number one, some references in pop culture are just horrendously made in Big Bang Theory, which is strange because it is a series that is all about that. They are getting a couple of things infuriatingly wrong. I am not a World of Warcraft player. I have played for some time, but that was a very long time ago. When this episode aired, my World of Warcraft time was already quite some time ago. So I'm not an expert in that topic, but I can use Google. And there are a lot of people very angry about 
how they represented World of Warcraft here in the beginning of this episode. It's not just that the nerds are shown as very strangely over the top reacting on everything in game. <laughs> it is also that they are using wrong terminology or just talking about it looks like huge things like the Gate of Elzebub. The Gate of Elzebub. Which sounds like a German public pool. And the Sword of Azeroth. I've got the Sword of Azeroth! Which is also not a thing in the game. So I, I don't think this is really difficult, you know, there, there are big things, there are big dungeons in World of Warcraft. I don't know that much, but I know that. Uh, which they could have used. And I'm really not sure why they didn't. If this is the first season of a series, perhaps they were just not that involved or they didn't know, is it worth the hassle? <laughs> but I don't like going at things like that, just not giving a crap because I'm not sure yet if it will be a hit. I will have about 50 views in this video probably. I'm still trying to make it the best video that I can right now, although I'm still learning. But anyway, I think stuff like this should not happen these days, especially because everybody knows there's the internet and people will get upset about that. Perhaps it's also just free advertisement. I mean, if all the World of Warcraft players who saw this have been so annoyed that they went into some forum and talked about that, other players would probably join in and want to see what the fuss is about and see the episode broadening the audience. Some of them will stick. I don't know, perhaps it's that. Do you think it was all tactics? Let me know down in the comments why you think stuff like this happens. And it does not just happen here. It happens in almost every TV series with pop culture background. Also, one thing I want to add, uh, it's often used also here, definitely in Big Bang Theory, to make fun of this overexcitement in perhaps not that easy to understand things for some people. I think I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit different. I don't know. Let me know what you think, if you feel the same way. But I'm always a little bit envious of people that have that much fun and that much engagement in things. I don't care that much what kind of things those are, as long as we're not talking uh, harmful things or stuff like that. Uh, I, I just admire people being that engaged and having that much fun with things, because isn't that just something to admire? Anyway, topic number two. And we will have that topic a lot uh, during the not only first season. If we continue the series, if you are interested in more, but I would like to make this more of a dialogue as much as you can do that in a monologous video. <laughs> but it is about Howard and the character of Howard and how he is represented and if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing. Because I'm, I'm thinking about that a lot. I think he is funny to a certain degree, definitely, and a very good actor. I think I said that already last episode, but should characters like this be in a series. When it comes to sexual harassment law, I'm a bit of a self-taught expert. I would think firstly, yes. We live in a time where we reconsider a lot of things uh, and are perhaps sometimes a little bit very overly careful where we do not have to uh, or shouldn't or find just more casual ways to speak about things and live with things and represent things. And at the same time, we have to be very conscious about how we exactly do that because everyone's feelings are valid, but that should not lead to, even in a comedy series, not to have characters like this, because I actually think that they give Howard a lot of contra points, like this reaction of Sheldon. <laughs> kissing, what kind of kissing? Cheeks, lips, chase, friend? What is wrong with you? Which definitely shows that the show as a whole and the other characters do not really think that his opinions are correct. And if you would just delete offensive characters out of every TV series or movie, you would lose a lot of genres. <laughs> you should not have any psycho killers or horror movies anymore, you know? 
Uh, I, I think characters like these, as long as they are as grossly overstated as Howard and they get a reaction from the environment in the series, I think that's that's a good context to put a person into. But that is my current opinion and I invite you definitely to just let me know what you think down in the comments or however and I will consider that in the continuing discussion because there is a lot of a very unpleasant Howard in the upcoming episode, so we can expand on that. If you're interested in that discussion, let's start it down in the comment section. But I think that's all I want to say about this episode. So let's take a look at the picture. I honestly think I'm getting better at these smaller pictures from a worse quality reference picture. So I like the light and shadow here. The eyes are pretty expressive. I think you can recognize her. Perhaps the shape of the face is not 100%. You could work m more on the neck area and stuff. So, yeah, th th this is not the best thing ever. <laughs> but I'm happy with it. I hope you are too, because this is our Leslie Winkle. I hope you enjoyed this art content combination. I have a lot of fun making those and I will probably continue to do so and trying to get more funny in. <laughs> I know that I have still to learn a lot there, but if you have any comments, anything you want to see me do, combine with art for example, trying out, reacting to, let me know down in the comments. But the only thing left now for me is say thank you very much for spending your time with me. I really appreciate that. I hope I'll see you soon again, perhaps in the next video. But until then, goodbye.